games. We've had five playoff matches. We've had seven months of Super League football. It all comes down to 80 minutes here at Old Trafford. And what an atmosphere greets the two teams. The moment they hope will be theirs at the start of the season. This year began on a very snowy weekend in March. It ends tonight on a humid October evening in front of the biggest Super League crowd of the season. The biggest Super League occasion of the season. The players are now ready. The fans are now ready. The coaches exchanged just the last and briefest of words, but they were chatting all the way out from the dressing rooms to the pitch. Two very good friends off the field, best of enemies now on it. And Stuart Raper and Brian Noble, for them, the day of destiny has arrived. Match referee is Stuart Cummings, his second grand final. He was the man in the middle during the World Cup final here last year. We've got a great game in prospect. It's about to get underway. No changing the betting, Steve-O, you're sticking with the balls. I sure am, but there's nothing between these two sides. A simple mistake, a missed tackle. It could all boil down to just one of those things. But what a magnificent entrance into a marvellous stadium. Hold on to your seat. Here we go, the 2001 Grand Finals underway. Right, Farrell with the kickoff. Difficult bouncing ball collected by Brian McDermott. There's the first tackle hey, of the 2001 so Grand yeah, Final. Wait, wait. The eyes of the sporting world are trained on Old Trafford tonight. We welcome our colleagues in Fox Two. Sports in Australia, wait. Sky in New Zealand. Frank Endicott, our old friend, apparently, is in the studio in New Zealand with special comments tonight. Frank, our thoughts are with you as well. And Pathé Sport in France. Obviously, they are taking our pictures, maybe not our commentary, but they will enjoy what is to come here over the next 80 minutes. There's the first penalty. Little and bit, it's committed by Harvey Howard. A little bit too quick. Not standing square. It shows you the enthusiasm. And Harvey Howard, well, ne never made many attempts to uh, go for it. Not surprisingly, Bradford, who I thought would just take things coolly, calmly and collected. They're going for the two points on offer, and rightly so. Spot on the halfway line. Well, it's an absolute mirror, Steve, of the tactics we saw just two weeks ago when Bradford beat Wigan to get to Old Trafford. Every penalty that was in Cooey of the posts, and Henry Paul kicked them. And even when they get the penalty, if Wigan concede way down into their own half, Brian Noble, their coach, I'm sure, would have told them to make sure that they don't rush, do not panic, work your way into this game. Well, so important for the first points to be on the board, and Henry Paul has kicked them through those points. Bradford are ahead, 2-0 against Wigan, the warning signs are out for the Warriors. Any penalties, and Henry Paul will pain them. Not that this game needed the gauntlet throwing to the ground, but that man, Henry Paul, probably his final game in Rugby League, though he did intimate that when he's finished his stint in Rugby Union, he felt he may be still strong enough and fit enough to come back to our code. But he will want to go out tonight with a big bang, and he started out in the best possible fashion. Well, Wigan have only touched the ball twice, and that's the kickoff. It's 2-0 to the Bradford Bulls, early moments of this grand final. And here now is Joe Vandena who drives the ball forward. And of course, during the course of the weekly rounds, Bradford have brushed opposition aside so often in the opening 20 minutes of a match. And it looks like they're trying to do exactly the same here. That's Jimmy Lowe's with a little scampering run. It's well, the fifth and last. The different uh, style to it, though, Eddie. They're not getting the ball out wide. They're just making sure that the forwards keep control. Massive kick from Henry Paul. Radlinski, though, underneath it. And Robbie Paul couldn't tackle him in the air. He had to wait. Radlinski hit the deck. And then Robbie Paul closed in. So Brian Carney now with Wigan with first use of the football in the grand final. But Robbie Paul showing the way there with Carney. No point in going too high on the winger. Carney, one of the best with the upper body strength. Got to go for his legs. Paul did exactly that. 
is the way it looks head to head between these two. Oh, what a cruncher on Renault by Scott Naylor. And on neutral venues, Wigan with four victories, Bradford yet to record a win against the men in cherry and white. This is Andrew Farrell. Head to head this year, it's been close. In fact, two wins apiece. Nothing to choose between them on the league ladder either, only points difference. Kick downfield, Withers will let this run deep, and so he does. Very shallow in goal area here at Old Trafford. Well, we spoke about the length of this uh, pitch here and that it may be a disadvantage. I've low time off, and there's a blood bin. I've low time off. Well, the looks Henry. of things, or oh, no, we have to wait until wait the whistle. The, whistle. the referee doesn't want to rush on with it. Now he blows time on and Van Gennard takes the tackle. The boot of Henry Paul at the moment separating these two sides as Leon Price takes the tackle from Terry Newton and Harvey Howard. Here goes James Lowe's, bounces off David Ferner, can't get away from Newton and Howard again. Well, Bradford's had all the possession and you have yet to put a second string pass together and that was the first. This is Robbie Paul, good ball to Scott Naylor and well watched by Andy Farrell. Oh, he got a good one on him as well, Naylor didn't like it. Here's Michael Withers. Renoff and Farrell do the tackling on him. It's the fifth and last, this set of six by Kona to Henry Paul. Another high raking kick, this. And it's a real tester on that far side. Penalty, though. Penalty to Wigan. Goes offside. And you've got them moving in uh, too quickly inside the 10. Hang on, fellas, get them all on side. Well, not so short. Can't see anybody in front of it there, like but uh, it wasn't seen that way by the official, Stuart Cummings. Well, it looked perhaps there was a little bit of an obstruction pushed the man out of the way by Gartner. Well, perhaps it wasn't for the offside, but the little push. Well, here's Harvey Howard now. He was a grand final winner with the Brisbane Broncos last year, 12 months ago, aiming for back-to-back -back winner's rings. Here now Connolly, pulled down by Graham Mackay. Another man playing. Oh, and that's a mistake from O'Connor. Well, that's what the doctor ordered if you're a Bradford fan. Wigan, they're playing their style of rugby league. They want to keep it away. You could see the ball was going behind O'Connor. Had to grab at it, and in tense conditions, came up with a mistake. But we've already seen how the tactics of Wigan, they're trying to get the ball out wide. Up to this point, Bradford's defence has been solid. Not such a good birthday present for Terry O'Connor, that drop pass. Scott Naylor tried to offload that ball. It made 30 Three, metres forward. He should have kept the position. Graham Mackay was hunting on his inside, but the ball never got to him. Graham Mackay, another, of course, making his last appearance in rugby league tonight for the Bradford Bulls. It's now with Mick Cassidy, one of the unsung heroes of this Wigan Warriors side. Well, early moments good for Bradford, not so for Stuart Rafer's Wigan. But Harvey Howard trying to turn defence into attack here. Takes the tackle. It was on the last. He didn't hear the call, the big man. Well, it's a huge crowd here. It is really noisy down on the field of play. But Wigan can't afford to do that. Doing the power play within deep in your own half. And then, of course, a mistake by the prop forward, Terry O'Connor. It will have been the start that Bradford would have dreamed of this. They just need points on the board and it would be perfect. Lowe's, little dummy, and attacking the heart of that Wigan defence, Brian Noble. Looking anxiously on, seven minutes gone, his team ahead by two points to nil. Courtesy of the boot of this fella, Henry Paul, who finds Michael Withers. And Withers goes past the first challenge, can't get away from the next two. It was Johns and Newton, quick play the ball, Graham Mackay, monster of a man. Flicks the ball back to Leon Price, denied here at Old Trafford two years ago, and denied now by that tackle. Withers, Withers gets the ball in, Robbie Paul stabs it towards the goal area, great defence from Van Gennar. Super kick, super tackle. But the fullback put his body on the line. This is the reason why he's one of the best. His positional sense was superb. So was the kick. And the tackle was even better. Talk about crunch time. Enough time to hang around, make a decision, just get the ball, and this big fella just 
banged him into the ground. A substitute in the World Cup final defeat for the Kiwis last year. And Robbie Paul played his part in that match as well. They're determined tonight to go out as winners. It's Brian McDermott to run the ball back over the halfway line for the ball, straight into Terry O'Connor, his opposite number. First tackle completed, Bradford are 40 metres away. This is to be to Vicona. Good little break from Vicona. Slow defence from Wigan in the first and second markers. They're having to do a lot of tackling. For sure, gets the pass away to Robbie Paul. That was a forward miss by the official. Referee didn't see it that way. Lowe's gives it to Withers again. Withers aiming for the corner, flicks the ball back. This is Gardner. And Gardner, oh, he was thinking about stretching out and pointing the ball over the line. Lowe's might. He's got there. Lowe's He's got there. It's a decision for the video referee, though. Stuart Cummins is not too sure. So he wants the video referee, Jerry Kershaw, to make the call. Well, this is a try for mine. Lowe's has squeezed over. Gardner tried. They were thwarted there, but not on this occasion. This will be TRY. No doubt about it. It's on the whitewash. And boy, oh boy, won't the Bulls fans go absolutely crazy. Yeah, they've got it right. Well, they're all saying try. What does the video ref say? He agrees. It's an 8 0 lead for the men from Yorkshire. Bradford 8, Wigan 0. Just the start that Bradford would have dreamed of. Well, it all came about with Graham Mackay going the short blind side and offloaded to Leon Price. Then Gardner went ever so close, but Lowe's made sure. We knew it was going to be a battle royal between the two number nines, the two hookers, James Lowe's and Terry Newton. Whoever would influence from the dummy half position perhaps would take away that gold winner's ring. And Jimmy Lowe's has come up with a perler. So Bradford with McDermott again, met by O'Connor and Howard. It's first blood for them in every sense of the word. They're ahead 8-0. We've had 10 minutes of this match. And Jimmy Lowe's... Normally, three from dummy half already tonight. He's run five times and he's got the juggling skills. And then a bullet pass goes away to Jamie Peacock. Well, a very, very tradesman like performance from the Bulls so far. They have not tried to be too fancy, they've just used the power, but they've used their composure too. And just look at that statistic there runs from dummy half by the Bulls, nine to two. And they're keeping the ball alive. Withers believes he scored. What a break from Henry Paul. I know, Eddie, that you said he should have offloaded, but that's TRY yet again. There is little doubt he has full control, and it's over the whitewash, brought about by the mercurial skill from Henry Paul. Shot through half an opening there. He did the right thing, held on to possession, which is always vital. Here he comes! The try is given. Bradford are on a roll that they believe will take them all the way to glory. And what's more for Wigan, as Withers and the Bulls celebrate, a huge blow because Brian Carney is limping from the field. Well, the defence was shot there. And Withers knew it, the first and second markers, they hardly had time to set up. This is Henry Paul who created the try, it's 14-0. What a start for Bradford. Who said this lot were chokers? This is the position, look at the huge gap there. They were completely caught out cold. The Wigan defence, and from that run there was a problem with Carney. I think Withers, this is a run here from Henry Paul. 
who did the right thing, held on. Hesitated, Withers went through, and then for some unknown reason, Carney started limping. Probably the tackle on Henry Paul brought about that injury, but this guy won't, he won't mind. Well, we saw the Australian Grand Final this year when the Newcastle Knights ran away with it against the Parramatta Eels. Hey, and we've got carbon copy here at Old Trafford. Bradford are 14-0 up, we have only had 12 minutes to play, and we're going to have a huge problem on our hands. Carney is off to the dressing room, limping. There's the scoreline, 14-0, that's more of a problem for Wigan. And the man who's come on is Paul Johnson in Carney's place, not a bad replacement, to be fair. But Wigan, oh, there's a mistake. Van dropped it. That's and the Wigan first mistake. That is the first mistake. You put the mocker on the Eddy. Up until then, Bradford were absolutely in control. Wigan need to score quickly. And that's what they're trying to do here now as Lamb feeds the ball to Newton and he offloads it to Matthew Johns. And Matthew Johns right, comes up the one. middle but disappears under go. the challenge from McDermott. Newton at acting half-back. Here is Cassidy. He drives it in again. This time, though, Two. Henry Paul and McDermott stand firm. Newton, away it goes to O'Connor. O'Connor trying to drive a hole, he oh, does. What a wonderful run. No Three. support play there. He's furious as a brought forward. Here, though, is Adrian Lamb. A little dab kick. It bounces back to Radlinski. And that might be six to go. No, he keeps the tackle count going. It's four gone, he says. Wigan looking to come left, they do with Lamb. Drop of the shoulder, and he's dropping the ball. And we play on. He dropped it backwards, and it was. And Withers, the man of the moment. Well, I was just about, Icona. I was just about to say that, uh, and there's Stuart Raper, who's concerned, and he's every right to be 14 points down. But the fact that they really had to get into it, when O'Connor made that break, there was just no one within Cooey of him. Would have been knocked on that actually by Three. Michael Withers, but the referee saw that incident another way, and that is why Bradford are in possession here with Vicona. Three. Well, we've seen Brian Carney limp off. Bill has been keeping an eye on it. Bill? Brian Carney has got a horrible knee injury. It's uh, a gash to his right knee, and it looks as though he's caught a stud in there, and it has left a big hole in his knee. It really is horrible to look at. The guy was in tears as he was taken to the dressing room. High kick, the tester for Dallas in the Australian ring. He was up to the point there, but there's the injury when Carney got the stud or something in his knee, and that was the last tackle he's made in this grand final so far. Will he return? Well, he did well to get back. He's got the tackle in on uh, Henry Paul. But it was wonderful speed from Henry Paul. That It was just a half a gap through the shimmy and accelerated away. Wigan, possession in the opposing half. Wigan with just one minute over the halfway line. They're still not over halfway. Now they are. That little chip from Lamb. Radlinski's after it. Withers just read the script. How cool and calm was he? He had to make a quick decision there. And oh, what on earth has he done? Well, he offloaded for McDermott, and Ferner has accepted the gift. Well, this is a chance. They're Farrell. losing the plot. Having full control of this game, they are allowing it. Well, it doesn't look too concerned, but I can, assure, I can assure you deep down, he will be absolutely livid. It was good work from the fullback in the first place, and then to just offer the ball like that, that's a sin. This is Matthew Johns, it comes back on the inside. Lamb gets it away to Cassidy. Cassidy to Johnson. Strong defence again from Bradford, and it has to be. Four tackles gone, two remaining. Newton! Newton! Just couldn't get through. A quick play of the ball to Cassidy. Cassidy to Johns. It goes wide to Farrell. Farrell back on the inside to Renoff. And Renoff tries to keep it alive. We've been keeping it alive. It's O'Connor. They've lost ground. It's with Ferner. And Ferner will attack down that left hand side. The ball, though, hit the deck. The ball carrying on hit the deck under the challenge. And Stuart Raper has got a little problem or two to attend to here. It's not a little one, it's a huge one. Ferner caught in possession there. They're just not getting their kicking game sorted out. And that means that the control out there from Farrell, Matthew Jones and Adrian Lamb is non-existent. Oh, that's, again, he's coming off the, the line in the first marker. Stuart Raper is livid. That's the second occasion that Howard has been penalised. Well, the only consolation for Wigan and Harvey Howard in that is that it's not on halfway, and Henry Paul, not even he can kick from there. You can see there, didn't stand square, so you're not allowed to make any attempt in the tackle. And Harvey Howard has been whipped straight off by Stuart Raper, 
and Neil Cowie has come on for him. Well, he knows how important the possession oh, is, well, and the giveaway, well, not only the penalty, but metres forward for Bradford. And as I mentioned earlier, Eddie, right, I anticipated the ball would just keep calm. Right. They took the time, kicking into touch. Well, Wigan scored three tries to two at Valley Parade two weeks ago, and they still lost. Bradford here now are 14 nil up, and it's with Robbie Paul. 17 and a half minutes gone of the 2001 Tetley Super League Grand Final, and Bradford bossing it. Peacock. Withers. Henry Paul. Henry Paul just showing it, giving it then to brother Robbie. And Robbie Paul takes a tumble. Cowie underneath him. It's the last one for Bradford. Lowe's. Lowe's will stab the ball looking for Naylor. And he's Boys, lost it. He's lost the ball. It'll be a knock on. Wonderful little chip kick, head and feet to the balls. Pressure on the full back, best in the world. Comes up with that mistake. Oh, that was a big hit. Vicona coming in there. So another glorious opportunity coming in here for the Bradford Bulls. They'll have head and feet at this scrum, 20 metres in from touch, 10 metres away, more importantly, from the Wigan line and yet more problems here for Wigan. Terry O'Connor, that stand out forward so far, down and injured. And maybe just giving his side a bit of a breather, he's got the experience there, obviously picked up a slight knock. It's not going well for Stuart Raper. It might get even worse, we've got Henry Paul standing very short on the blind side and there's an enormous gap. So will he go from the blind side to the open and bring back someone on the inside? Keep your eye on. It could be a planned move here. Robbie Paul, Robbie Paul from the base of the scrum. Henry is there. Showed it to Henry. Dummy. Showed it to Mackay. Dummy had to take the tackle. It was on. Just didn't offload it. Took the tackle from Radlinski. Withers. Good ball to Mackay, but it was forward. Says the referee. He's got one right. He's missed two already. Oh, it's all right, didn't it? There's two previous to that, but uh, I thought the Matty Whistleblower could have brought back. 14-0, he has to be pleased. Only one real mistake that his side have come up with. Stuart Raper, of course, he knows that uh, they come up with several, including two silly penalties given away by Harvey Howe. Well, 18 wins from 21 under Stuart Raper. They are unbeaten at home. In fact, the Bradford Bulls not only unbeaten at home, but... 100% at home this year. This, though, is neutral territory. This is untried, untested ground. Three. Hands out! Both have been here in grand finals before. Wigan have won one, Bradford have lost theirs. But at the moment, Wigan having to come from behind, and Terry Newton flicks the pass away. Desperate pass. Desperate in every sense of the word. And that's been the game plan. Desperation. We just have not seen the quality play from Wigan. That really was a poor pass from the hooker. But we've not seen the influence of the two halfbacks, Tons and Lamb, they haven't a chance to combine. They've completely lost their shape. It's Gartner now for the Bulls. Connolly with the tackle, helped out there by Matthew Johns. Lowe's inside it goes to Robbie, on then to Henry, flick back to Peacock. That's the fifth and last good defence on show here from the Wigan Warriors. Withers from dummy half, a big hole has opened up for Withers, he flicks the ball back, this will be play on, Henry Paul with a chip to the corner, ah, but that's uh, too deep. And a lot of pressure, trying to get the ball away, but uh, again, the problems that Wigan are having in that first and second market department is appalling. They are just not up for this. The times that they have allowed the Bulls to run freely from dummy half, well, it's quite amazing. In a strange sort of way, would Stuart Raper and uh, his coaching staff be happy? It's only 14 nil at this day. I think you'd have to say so, yes. Brian McDermott with a, a bang on the, uh, the cherry. Flat run, now Farrell will straighten this up. The ball then from Johns to Farrell, but uh, Wigan looking to get themselves back into the grand final. They come down the short side with Renault. Great tackle, low down by Henry Paul. And he's hurt as Henry Paul. Johnson then flicks the ball inside to Johns. A high hanging kick, Connell is after it. 
Connolly couldn't get near him. And Gartner will try and work it away. Good tackle by David Ferner. Good take, but there's problems all over the field. Henry Paul's picked up a knock. Andy Farrell's picked up a knock also. It's one of those games that having to put their bodies on the line. But this is a department that having trouble. Look at that, they're just letting them run free. You've got to stop them. Vicona thought better of offloading, took the tackle instead. Lowe's to the big man Anderson, who's got fielding with him. Great tackle from Lamb. Oh, they've given another penalty away on halfway. And Straight they're all away. pointing at the post. Straight away. The two white things up there with a the crossbar, that's where we want to go for. Why on earth are they doing this? Complete lack of composure. Neil Cowie, the tackle was completed. That's a lazy effort from the prop forward, and he knows it too. He's already reefed from the field. Harvey Howard. That is just well, sheer lunacy. Well, it is with uh, a player of this quality. Henry Paul on the field, that's the uh, the angle he has, well there is no angle, he's bang in front of the post, but he's about 48 metres away, and he can give them a thump, and he's not only giving it a thump, he's got two more points, and he will gobble those up all night, 16-0 the balls, Wigan are in all sorts of trouble. Well they're probably thinking now, we don't care how long this pitch is, how wide it is, you can say what you want about our home ground, that's the reason why we've had superiority this year. You try telling that to Stuart Raper, because the Bulls have played near-perfect rugby league football, nothing too fancy, but they've worked hard. Wigan, they have not. Well, how can Wigan get back into this match? Maybe Phil Clark can offer us a clue. Then they need some possession, and uh, when they do get it, they've got to show a little bit more composure than what they've done when they've had the chance to do something. But the other big area, they've got to try and compete with Bradford in this play of the ball area. It's one of the reasons why they're so strong and on such of a roll, because Bradford just play the ball and are offloading now. Wigan just hanging on at the moment. And really, the amount of energy it's taken out of him doing so much defence is a worrying element for Stuart Raper. They have to defend here, another run from Henry Paul, he's escaped the net. He hasn't escaped that net, it belonged to Mick Cassidy and Adrian Lamb. It's the last tackle here, this set of six. It's with Robbie Paul, a high kick again to Tess Dallas. If it was a cold night, this would have snow on it. And Stuart Fielding was called by the referee to stay out of that. And he was offside. A big smile on his face. That's the way Bradford are playing tonight, to be fair, with a big smile. Well, they looked calm and collected, didn't they? As they walked out to this wonderful stadium. Sure that anybody was on uh, offside there. The, uh, the couple on the blind side, seen by the official. But look at this defence here. Not the Bradford's had to do many of that. But, but Stuart Raper has got to make sure he gets a message out to his Wigan players. You've got to stop these men running from dummy half. The missed tackle count in and around the play of the ball must be horrific for Raper. He agrees with you, Steve. Oh, that's a better break though from Cassidy. He flicked off Lowe's, but. Uh, Anderson and Fielden, two of the biggest men on the park, were waiting for Cassidy. Lamb to Johns. Matthew Johns, of course, brother Andrew. A oh, wonderful that's performance that's from him in his grand final back home. I bet he's watching uh, his brother here tonight, with our colleagues at Fox Sports, and he's watching oh, at the moment his brother having to play second fiddle to this Bradford Bull side. And here is Lamb, who hoists the kick towards the goal area. This is deep, and he's claimed it. Price, he's defused the bomb, comes back to the 20 for a quick tap, and away they go, and it's with Price. Well, it's a perfect game plan at the moment for Bradford and Stuart Race. Uh, he, uh, he should have been penalised there, allowed to let the man get up and play the ball, Leon Price. But I must say, when Wigan took St. Helens apart two, last week, they were utilising the second man out wide, bringing someone back on the angle. We've yet to see that from Wigan in the second ploy. That was a big collision there for... Uh, Robbie Paul, right on halfway, he plays it to Lowe's, he looked where the double-decker bus had come from then, it was three Wigan players. This now is Henry, Henry Paul away to Scott Naylor. Scott Naylor who bounces off Johnson, he's got a ton of support by Kona, Johnson forward, was it? It was. Withers is over He's going to give it, oh, this is a vital decision. A try is given. Oh, dearie me. Second try for Michael Withers. Well, it's a 
with his knock on that denied him last time they were here at Old Trafford. That was controversial in itself, but this will match it. That look forward for mine. Stuart Cummings, to be fair, he looked to the touch touch. Full credit to Forshaw, they kept it around. Jimmy Lowe's is hanging around like a pickpocket, he's just picking anything up that's offloaded. Poor defence. Withers in, onto Vicona, and this is a pass. Oh, it looks shade forward. They've got away with it, you see, from a different angle. Oh, that's very difficult for Cummings to see. Now look at Cummings looking at the touch touch there. Did he go forward? No, not from the touch touch. The flag waver said negative, and this guy turned it into a positive. Fantastic play. It has to be said, but a lot of controversy surrounds it. No controversy about the conversion from Bang in front. Henry Paul has kicked Bradford Bulls into what could be, even now, an unassailable lead. Perfect! Perfect for Brian Noble and the Bulls. They are ahead by 22 points to nil, and Withers has scored two tries. Remember, in this country, we don't hand the decision on to the video referee to decide on forward passes. That's the view of the referee and the touch judges. And the touch judge, he gave the nod to Stuart Cummings. The try is given. 22-0. We haven't had half an hour yet. Well, I can't believe it, Eddie. I said before this match kicked off that Brian Noble would take a leaf out of the Newcastle Knights when they controlled everything in the first half of their grand final down in Sydney. They absolutely steamrolled it over the top of the Parramatta Reels. That's a knock-on. Point claiming for it. Head in, head in, head in. And Paul felt that there was a, a boot on his hand, but I think he just lost it. Well, there was a hand in there from Mick Cassidy, but uh, the way it is at the moment, Wigan won't be disputing it, will they? Oh, Lamb's pass is appalling. That's got to be a knock-on. Oh, he's allowed it to play on. No, no, whistle's gone. Knock-on. Well, the touch judge saw that one. And that look just said it all, didn't it? Rolling back into his seat. And it was going forward. That wasn't a knock on. He caught it uh, from Gary Connolly. But uh, things just not working out from Wigan. Being denied possession. But when they've had it, they just squandered it and wasted it. They really need to just roll up their sleeves and try it slowly but surely to get back into this game some way. Well, if we're not careful, Steve, it'll be over and away from them before half-time. It was 24-0, wasn't it, for Parramatta? They had to come from the 24-0 deficit against the Newcastle Knights. They managed to score 24 points in the second half, but it was a bridge too far. And the way Bradford are playing, they could add to this lead in a big way in the next uh, ten and a quarter minutes. Well, especially with the fact that they've had such a long rest. I thought that the only chance for Wigan to win was to control the game, score maybe two tries in the opening 20. It hasn't worked out, but look at the space they're allowing from Dummy Hart. Lowe's is having a field day. He gets Bradford to within 20. It's now with Robbie Paul. It goes wide. This time to field and back it goes to Paul. Here is Withers. It's a hat-trick for Michael Withers. Hat-trick for Withers. Game set match may be for the Bradford Bulls. can put that down yet again from the run from dummy half and this time it was the hook of Jimmy Lowe's from that position they kept it alive look at the gaps and all over the place anyone that's got double-decker buses bring it down to Old Trafford because I tell you what you've got plenty of space to park it Wigan aren't even bothering they are just shot to pieces they don't even have either a sliding defense a man-on-man -man defense it's just not there they just have not turned up Michael Withers, first hat-trick ever in a grand final on this ground. Radlinski and Connolly did it on this ground, though. Hat-tricks for Wigan in Premiership final in 1995. Henry Paul sweeps in another, this time he misses. He gets booed by his supporters. But Bradford are 26-0 up against Wigan. The 2001 grand final, 
It's a one-horse race at the minute. This is where they're cutting them the ribbons. They go in the second way, he's going to the left. Just moving forward now, and you'll see the gap that's appearing. Oh, you cannot allow that. And from that, they got the position, and they were always going to be in trouble. Well, we're going to are in a ton of trouble. They have got a lot to do now to get into this grand final. 32 minutes gone, 26-0. And Bradford knowing, showing no and so, signs and so, wait, of look. shaking. No. Well, they said they choked in the big time, didn't they? Yeah. This will need a, <laughs> a big piece of bread to choke on, I'll tell you. Whoops. For sure, with the knock on. Gartner didn't like the attentions from Gary Connolly. Well, it's as though it's their given right, the way they're playing. You can just see there, they just had a little look there, did Foreshaw, at uh, the second row of David Ferner. Head in, Mike. Well, Mike, if Wigan in, had a wish, in. it would be that they score from this. Because it's the grand final. Right, that's one, hands out. That is turning into yeah, a horror yeah, yeah. story. But for Bradford Bulls, it's a fairy tale. And here is Two. Gary Connell. Yeah. Disappears under that challenge from Gardner. It's with Neil Cowie. Wigan look absolutely shell-shocked. Bradford are swarming round them, and there's another pass that's offloaded. And Wigan are committing oh, Harry Carey. Well, for Wigan, right Parramatta Eels. Oh, yeah. That's two! This is, this is a and I bet, <laughs> replica of what occurred down under in Sydney. Field and's able to stand and get the ball away to Lowe's. He will give it width now to Henry Paul, and he'll drive it in over the halfway line. Look at me. Come on, he looks it. a worried man, and so he should be. Henry Paul, they've got another penalty, and here's another two points on offer. Well, that was a call from the touch judge on this side. Has Neil Cowie been caught again? Well, we spoke about the indiscipline. When they last played Bradford. Well, Cowie and Cassidy. Definitely pulled him back. Once you've made the tackle, according to the rules and regulations, you then must roll away from the area where the man can cleanly play the ball. Tell you what, this fellow won't want the half-time siren to sound. And neither does he either. <laughs> well, he's having the time of his life. Well... Finals have been so tight over the past three occasions we've had them. We're not used to this. And Henry Paul here for two more. Draws it towards the post. Oh, the man is human. That's two in a row he's missed. Drop kick. Well, they've all got smiles on their faces, and why shouldn't they? As there's the man who's planted it there, Brian Noble. 26 nil. Who would have predicted this? Pretty hard to believe. As in Australia, said in Australia down in Sydney, uh, there's a stunned half time crowd there, I can assure you. All credit to the Eels, as uh, Eddie has just mentioned, they came back and scored 24 points in that second half. Well, they conceded uh, eight, didn't they? Six or eight, anyway. Six they it lost was. It. Look at Mike Coma. They have waited and plotted for this all year, the Bulls. Lowe's. Peacock. One thing you have to forget, though, Eddie, that Stuart Raper, he's a fine coach, and uh, he will be trying his best at half-time. Surely they can't play this bad in the second stand. Last tackle here, Lowe's. Henry Paul, a dab towards the corner. Brother Robbie's after it, but it'll beat everybody. Well, they can't believe what they're seeing. There's no jubilation there, is there? Some people biting their nails. Uh, Bradford, well, their supporters, they started the party. Let's hope they're not too premature. Dallas, we haven't seen much of this vaunted Wigan three-quarter line. We haven't seen anything of the half-back partnership. But we've seen nothing really from Wigan, have we? The forwards have been completely out-muscled. Not only that, it's uh, been on a rare occasion that they've gone through their sets of six and put in a good kick-and-chase game. That was a good ball from Farrell to Connolly. Here goes Farrell again. Can the captain play his part in the fight back of all time? 
Well, he knows that they have to get a try before the half-time break. This is the last tackle, this set of six. Newton will hoist the kick. Here comes the chase, Radlinski leads it. Vicona, though, steady and solid as a rock. What a great take. What good work there by Scott Naley. You can see he just shielded him sufficiently. Well, he looks heartbroken, Stuart Raper. He's in trouble, he knows it. He's not. Henry Paul, they're running onto the football with such confidence now, the Bulls. They had been from the very first whistle, to be fair. And here is Graham Mackay. They are such a massive side, Bradford. And they have the volcano, of course, Leslie Vinacolo. All signed up for next year. They're going to be even bigger, if that's possible. That's a great kick from Lowe's. Terrific kick with just over two minutes to go to half time. Just let the clock tick down. Good thinking, but look at yet again the amount of time and the space that they allowed him to get the kick away. Had a look on the open side, decided I'll go to the blind. Had all the time in the world. I don't think that Brian Noble would have even thought that they would have bossed this half so convincingly. Well, Withers has caught the eye with his three tries, Steve, over Brian Noble's men. There's only one hooker who has ever won the Harry Sunderland Man of the Match award here in this uh, particular event over the years. Not the grand final, it must be said, but premiership finals and championship finals prior to that. And uh, it's your good self, of course. And Jimmy Lowe's, although Withers has scored the tries and will get the headlines, Lowe's is running the show. Yeah, well, it's uh, Jimmy's capable of scoring four in the second half, isn't he? I don't think he'll be interested in, in thinking of anything about that at all because they know this has been such a convincing performance in the first 40. Well, it's even more they perfect than, than Newcastle Knights. It yep. really is. They've just blitzed them. 26 nil. It was only 24 nil in Australia. Well, to be fair, I think the Knights came up with just one mistake, and that was about 30 seconds before the half-time break. I think Bradford have come up with four or five themselves. But when you look at the problems that Wigan have had in that first 40, it's going to be nightmare reading for Stuart Raper. What can he do? What can Leon Price do here? Hey, Good chase led there by the captain, Farrell. Price will take his time. He's hurt his knee. That's why he will take his time. Well, he'll stop the clock with Stuart Cummings and rightly so. And they'll move it uh, a metre to the side. We'll get the game underway. Not that awkward. Left okay, leg, buckled underneath him, and he's not right. He's uh, not shamming this, I can assure you. One nil, time no, he's still receiving treatment there as uh, Bradford have played the ball about four or five metres away from the incident. Three. That's why Henry Paul has it. But the ability for the Bulls to mix and match from the dummy half position. You go through all those runs from dummy half, it has not all been from Jimmy Lowe's. There has been so many of the Bradford players that have been doing their bit running into the dummy half. And it looks like Price could be coming off. This is the last tackle, though, this set of six. And uh, Lowe's, well, that kick was far too deep, far too hard. But uh, we will get them marshalled because Wigan will have to tap and restart this from their own 20 metre line. And uh, they have 10 seconds in which to get over the line at the other end. Well, Bradford down to 12, they are carting Leon Price off from the field of play. It won't matter, the clock will beat them. There's a half-time siren, Price limps his way to the sideline, they'll try and patch him up in the dressing room during half-time. And talking about patching up, Stuart Raper has got a huge job to do. Brian Noble's team have done him absolutely proud. A wonderful exhibition, and Michael Withers with three tries. Low scored the other. Henry Paul has kicked Wigan to death. In the meanwhile, he's missed a couple, it must be said. But Wigan have really threatened. Wigan have really showed themselves as true grand final contenders. What a way for Henry Paul to bow out. The Bradford Bulls are ahead here by 26 points to nil. Farrell knows it will take the most monumental comeback to win this grand final from the Bradford Bulls now. But if any team can, the Wigan Warriors can. Bradford will kick off, 40 minutes away. 
and Bradford, they have incentive enough of their own to make sure that they win this match, of course, outright, because so many people have pointed the finger and said that they cannot perform on the big stage. Well, the stage doesn't come any bigger than this, and Bradford have performed so far magnificently. Can it keep on? Can Wigan bake the bread big enough to let them choke at 26-0? It's not going to be easy. But the one thing that uh, Bradford cannot do, they cannot become complacent. They have got to concentrate on the job in hand. Don't let their minds wander and thinking what they're going to do as they slip on the ring, as they go up and pick up the trophy. There is still work to do, and I'm sure that Brian Noble would have said that at half-time. Little dink over the top, we'll find out what the uh, two coaches have said. Lowe's read the script absolutely perfectly there. In fact, let's uh, find out what was said in those dressing rooms at half-time. Here's Bill. Eddie, Sir Alex Ferguson is famous in these here parts for his half-time talks when things are going wrong, but I think Stuart Raper could teach him a thing or two, because by all accounts, the paint is clinging to the walls, barely in flakes in there. He really has let rip to his side to show how displeased he is with their performance and to tell them just what they've got to do in this second half to regain their pride and the pride in the name of Wigan, because that's what it is all about. It's personal for Wigan now. They're hurt, and they want to get some revenge in this second half. Brian Noble, very pleased with his size performance. His only instruction, don't take your foot off the gas. Doesn't look as though they're going to. Although that pass bounced kindly for Wigan and Johnson has it back for them. Well, a silly play there by Scott Naylor in a wonderful position to just make sure that uh, they could have put the little grubber kick away and then apply even more pressure that they did so effectively in the first half. Well, this match, as I say, being watched uh, all over the world. Our colleagues Fox Sports in Australia. TV in New Zealand, that uh, Frank Endercott, the former Wigan coach, is in the studio, and also Pathé Sport in France taking coverage of the grand final tonight. So Wigan with uh, something of a worldwide reputation in the game, and boy, have they got some rebuilding to do in this second 40 minutes. Johnson takes the tackle from Henry Paul, has been magnificent all night for the Bulls, and it's now with Adrian Lamb, and a little drifting kick over the top is gobbled up by Robbie Paul, a little juggle with uh, Graham Mackay. Let's get news of the two injured wingers from that first half, Leon Price and Brian Carney. Bill? Brian Carney's right knee is a, a real mess. He's uh, got been cut right down to the bone in that first half injury that happened fairly early on in the play. Devastated Carney and caused Wigan one or two problems as well. Certainly unsettled them early on. Leon Price, you saw, pick up an injury towards the end of that first half. He's twisted his ankle badly. Doesn't look as though he's going to be returning. It's a race here between Robbie Paul and Chris Wablinski in the ball. And the ball bobbled and bounced its way and uh, that took the gold medal. It was a photo finish for second place between Wablinski and Robbie. Isn't this guy making an impact on the game now, James Lowe's? In the last 15 minutes of the first half, he took over the kicking roll. And yet again, beautifully weighted kick. The opportunity not before to get close to it, but the most important factor is position. OK, they haven't got the position at the moment, but they do realise that Wigan are in a real hole. It's been pretty strong defence from the Bradford side so far. Look at that, twice as many runs from dummy half, 26-13. That tells its own story. Well, Bill was talking about uh, pride, but uh, Stuart Raper was talking about himself inside the Wigan dressing room. Worst Wigan performance in a cup final way back in 1994. They lost 33 points to two in the Regal Trophy final against Castleford at Headingley that year. And uh, boy, were Wigan taken to the cleaners that day. They have uh, really been taken to the cleaners for 40 minutes here. And they don't want another repeat of that particular scoreline from uh, seven years ago. It's all about pride now for Wigan and putting pride back in the jersey. And after that, they will let the grand final, I suppose, take care of itself and they'll see if they can get within a sniff. And the boys in the studio, Steve-O, half-time, Ian Millwood, Sean McRae, saying that uh, Wigan mustn't panic, they mustn't have this in the back of their mind, that they've got to score first, but I have a feeling that they have to score first. Well, it's an amazing situation that, uh, say, perhaps they do give a penalty away and uh, Henry Paul drops over another two points. Viconas after four. The ball's tipped inside, and it's carried on, and here is Peacock, and he gets up, and he manages to flick the ball back to Withers, who's on a four-try spree here. 
Will they go for the one point, perhaps? The ball is with Forshaw. He dabs it in. Forshaw's after it himself. Again, bravery on show from Radlinski. Well, the short kicking game has been nothing short of superb from Bradford. But the point that I was trying to make, Eddie, is that perhaps to say Henry Paul does kick the two points, that Bradford may become complacent, and then that's when they can hit. Remember St. Helens against Brisbane in the World Club Challenge? Second half, Brisbane scored first. They get a little bit complacent. What happens? Whammy, St. Helens come and win the game. Can Wigan do the same? Well, we shall see. Oh, they won't oh, do it with it. handling no. like that. He's in despair. Yep. Stuart Raper is in despair. And as Ian Millwood pointed out in the, the half-time break, that it, it's the more experienced players that are bringing about the pressure and the mistakes and the missed tackles. Well, six minutes gone, and uh, the script hasn't altered much for Wigan. They still trail 26-0, and this is head and feet at the scrum to the Bradford Bulls. Robbie Paul feeds, and it comes down the short side to Rigon. Tackled here by Connolly and Matthew Johns. Manages to get the ball away, though, just the same to Graham Mackay. Mackay drives it in with the shoulder into the chest of Terry Newton. Well, then again, get to his feet. Then again, we see the Wigan defence. Some are moving forward, others are sure. not. Four short of Gartner, and it's desperate defence from Wigan, and it had to be. That would have been curtains. Lowe's, will he pinch one? Mackay with the strength. No, Wigan managed to hold him out. Three tackles gone. They've got a bundle of tackles in the bank here of the Bulls. Robbie Paul, Henry Paul. It goes on then to Peacock. He straightens it up but has to take the tackle from Dennis Betts. And what a tackle it was from the second rower. Henry Paul tormenting them. Gartner tries to go through a gap. Gartner is over the line. If he touches it down, it's a try. He and he got thinks he has. Lamb's got underneath him. They'll get head and feed with this. He'll go for the screen. He's not quite sure. I don't think it's a try. I think Lamb has got well underneath Gartner. And even Gartner's shaking his head. Lamb has a knee underneath there, but oh, Gartner just slipped it in. Well, And as Lamb finished up pinching the football. Best to look to the video referee. Lamb has pinched the football, two on one. This could be a penalty. Now, are we going to go into a penalty try situation? Well, Jerry Kershaw's had a few... Uh decisions to make tonight already though I do get the impression that Gartner just released it as well so I think this might be a held up situation no try scrum attack. It is scrum attack he was held up over the line I think he got it right there well they were all biting their nails then the Wigan fans weren't they So, Bradford with this scrum, ten metres away, Robbie Paul comes back towards Michael Withers. Wigan having it, the devil's own job in stopping hey, Withers well, tonight. Well, well, Robbie Paul again, scampers into dummy half, and he gives it then to Mike Forshaw, back to Robbie Paul, good hands to Anderson, and the Wigan second rower, David Ferner, was waiting for him. Lowe's, Lowe's to Robbie Paul, Paul then to Gartner. Second consecutive Three, set of six on that Wigan line. Bradford, Wigan hand, hand them off. Bradford are very confident, Eddie. They're now going through the repertoire of moves. This is Field and he gets them. Watch Lowe's bring it forward. Watch Lowe's bring it forward on the angle. Anderson. Anderson's there. Oh, oh he's, dropped. he's dropped it. He was set up. Okay, zero. Let him Radlinski go. will counter. Zero. Well, you called it, Steve-O. And here now is Connolly. He's through one. Can't get away from Anderson. He keeps it alive though to Newton. Here is Farrell. Farrell then gets the ball away to Johnson. Big collision with him and Naylor. There it was, the angle run from Anderson. He just dropped it. And Betts now trying to get Wigan up and over the halfway line. Newton to Lamb. Here's Johns. Short ball then to Ferner, but they just can't break through this defence. Big hit from Anderson on David Ferner. Neil Cowie. Struggling over the halfway line after four tackles. Now Wigan and Johns and Lamb, they've got to start combining. Newton's made the break. Newton gets it away. Here is Lamb. Wonderful tackle from Withers. That's one. Much better from the Warriors. Newton, wide it goes to Farrell. Oh. And out. They all ducked. Farrell's bullet pass wide, and about two players ducked, and another one jumped over it. They had the overlap as well. 
Newton combining twice. Right, tackle one. Here we are. The idea was right. Oh. It may have just deflected off the head of Dennis Betts, which gave Steve Renouf no chance to get to it. Two! He'll be trying his hardest. Oh, here. knock on here. Knock on by Anderson. Is the tide turning? Well, they've had two golden opportunities. Gartner going very close. Neil then Ander Cowie's lucky there. Then Anderson drops the ball with a set piece from James Lowe's. He knows they have to score now. Yes, if we're going to have any hope at all, this must turn into a four-pointer. Right, and Bradford knows it as well. Renoff, though, takes the first tackle. Johnson is the dummy half. But look at the Wigan attack. They're all Two. hanging around. No one's controlling it out there. They're very quiet. Someone's got to start taking control out there. Lamb to Johns. Maybe that's the two. He finds Connolly. And Connolly just couldn't get away from another fine tackle from Shane Rigon. Brett Dallas is the acting halfback. He gives it then to Johns. On it goes to Lamb. Then flat again to Farrell. And Farrell taking them on. Slips the pass. Renoff has knocked Not it forward. All. It's not going to be Wigan's night. It is not going to be Wigan and Stuart Raper's night. They just cannot combine together, can they? They can't get through the sets of six. Bradford. As Bradford have got that role on, they're full of confidence. As the seconds tick away, the Gremlins Bradford, are having a ball inside the heads of these Wigan players. Mistake after mistake, just eroding any chance of getting back right, into this match. One. Well, it's uh, a night that Wigan will want to forget. It's a night that uh, Bradford Bulls in half an hour or thereabouts will remember for the rest of their lives. You've got to hand it to Brian Noble, though. He has read this game perfectly. He has known that Wigan have been a little bit sloppy around the first and second markers, and he has taken full advantage. Not just Lowe's himself, but every player out there on the Bradford side has moved into the dummy half, and they've made valuable metres forward. Yes, it's a, a perfect match so far for Brian Noble. Here is Henry Paul. He'll hoist the kick out wide again. It's another tester for Dallas. Mackay is with him. He's flicked it. It went backwards. Fortunately for Dallas, Radlinski again for the umpteenth time tonight tidies up. And Dallas will try and run this ball back again. But the tackling is so secure from Bradford. At the moment, there's just no way through for Wigan. Johnson maybe, but he gets through one, and then Withers is there. What a game the fullback's having. Not only just in attack with a hat trick, but he's pulled off some magnificent tackles throughout this match. Icona with an important challenge then on Renoff. Infield it comes to Dennis Betts, on then to Mick Cassidy. Dennis Betts must feel that uh, he is destined never to win a grand final. Missed out in 98 and was in the side that lost last year. He's offside. Oh, that was silly play. I really should have left that ball alone. Well, it's a good job it's not 12 metres further forward. It's certainly knocked on by Cowie, and you can see that uh, Newton really shouldn't have kicked that football. He's another one who must think he's blighted at grand finals. He's looking at his third loser's medal in four years. Lost every one so far. Well, he's tried hard, especially in defence as well, and he had such a wonderful game last week. He was a catalyst to, for their success against Saints but he has been completely outplayed by his opposite tonight. And there is his opposite, James Lowe's, who gives it to Vanganar. There's no respite from the big men. Brian Noble just rotates this huge pack of his around, and Vanganar's on now. I should wonder where Brian will send out the message. OK, fellas, we've had enough. Let's start going for the one-pointer. Let's slowly but surely just uh, tighten this trap. Well, they're bang in front of the Wigan post, and... Uh, Field and struggling to his feet. Lowe's brings Michael Forshaw onto the football. Forshaw struggling to get away, still not tackled. Now he is. They still have a couple left here to Bradford. Lowe's looked at the post then. Little stab to the in goal area, and uh, that's too deep. Well, the man of the match tonight will go home with the Harry Sunderland Award. He will also go home with the uh, watch, of course. We're having no say in it this evening. It's the Rugby League Writers Association who will judge the man who has had the biggest impact on this night. And Michael Withers at the moment must be a very short-priced favourite. I don't think there'd be a bookie in the world would give you odds on this one. Keep it in your pocket, Eddie. I think I will on this occasion.
on this occasion. Cassidy. Cassidy takes the tackle. And so, to be fair, a long way away from the nearest bar. Indeed. Ferner. Oh, great defence. Ah! They've been sensational tonight, Bert. Yep. Uh, for this one. Hoisting the kick is Matthew Jones. He won't turn it in. And that's bounced off by Kona. It's still the last, though. And look at the way back, Kona's hunting the man in possession. It's come free, still the last, says the referee. So Wigan will run it. Here's Connolly. Connolly tries to kick the ball through. It's still the last, and Henry Paul will tidy up for the ball. Just sheer speculation, though. They have really got no one out there, Wigan, who are controlling things. In fact, the last time that they had possession, Andy Farrell was trying to take the ball up down the centre. We spoke so much about last week where Farrell was operating wide of the two centres. But that was when, of course, Matthew Johns and Adrian Lamb were combining to such wonderful effect. They have been absolutely non-existent tonight. Here's Robbie. Back it goes to Peacock. It's the last tackle and uh, Bradford are just 10 metres over halfway. Lowe's will stab the ball and that will run dead. He doesn't mind, he knows that uh, they can set up their line of defence. Uh, look at this crowd and 60,000, over 60,000 inside Old Trafford tonight. And year on year, this marvellous occasion builds and builds and builds. And it won't be long before we get the house full notices out of this. It has created its own little bit of magic, its own little bit of mystery in the hearts of the British sporting nation. And 60,000, over 60,000 has turned up again tonight. We had humble beginnings, 45,000 we thought was humble four years ago, and it's built to what it is now, an occasion to save it. Certainly has, and uh, OK, there's uh, somewhat bewilderment from one section of this crowd, and that's the Wigan fans, obvious, obviously, but, uh, well, the atmosphere amongst the Bradford Bulls is just absolutely electric. I mean, so often... They've had to live with the tag of the side that chokes, that freezes in the big games. Well, they haven't freezed thus far. They have to defend this last tackle here. And it's with Johns who hoists the kick for Dallas, but Mackay is there, and that was just like taking cherries off a tree. No contest. Thank you. Just get out of the way, Mr Dallas. Mackay playing his last match. Tonight, he was in the Penrith Grand Final in 1991 on the winning side against Canberra. I think he's going to be on the winning side here at Old Trafford tonight. Well, I just can't see Wigan getting back into it because uh, they've shown no real promise other than the fact when you get anywhere near the Bradford's area, all they're left with is just a choice of the kick, and Bradford are just going through their set of moves. They're just toying with Wigan at the moment, and I think there's going to be more points in this last quarter... Henry Paul drills the kick all along the ground. No problems, safety first. And uh, apparently some rather anxious news coming in on Andy Farrell, Bill. That's right, it's going from bad to worse for Wigan tonight, and Andy Farrell just having another visit from the, uh, the Wigan physio there. He had a dead leg towards the end of the first half, and the word was that they were hoping he'd run the injury off. It really doesn't look as though there's been any improvement. He's been hobbling around the pitch. He hasn't been influential and not taking anything away or making excuses for Wigan, but the fact that Farrell really hasn't been operated at full capacity certainly hasn't helped their cause. No, it hasn't. Hey, it's up and run. Now, mind you, they've had uh, a few players, Steve-O, tonight who haven't been running at uh, full tilt. It uh, has not been the night to be a Wigan warrior. Johnson does well, though. Gets it away to Newton. Newton. He's, he's tried his damnedest as a hooker. Support arrives from Cassidy. Play, Play on. on. The good. tackle not completed. Good decision by Stuart Cummings. And Andy Farrell has come off the field. Andy Farrell has left the scene. The kick over the top from Lamb. Dallas and Mackay contesting it, but it's no contest. Mackay is a giant. And poor old Brett Dallas looks like one of the seven dwarfs. Well, Brett Dallas looked like a labourer just about to go onto a building site because the big fella just built the wall around him. Thank you. Bricks, no pass. This match, though, so far being played in wonderful spirit between these two sides. Chris Chester, the man on for Farrell. Here's Vicona, and he gives it to Henry Paul. Oh, and that was an important flick by the... I think it was actually by the boot of Mick Cassidy. 
Now then, Robbie Paul. They're getting very tired at Wigan. They've had an awful amount of defence to do. And that will definitely take its toll, and they know it. Henry Paul for a drop goal. He's just sliced it wide. I was wondering when he was going to go for the first one, and that's it. And there'll be more to come, not the best effort from him. But these Bradford okay, players, they'll be looking up at the scoreboard and thinking, look at that, 26-0. They'll be looking up at the big clock as well and knowing they have just 20 minutes to go before they will be tasting champagne. And Wigan, 207 tackles to Bradford's 140. And that will take its toll in the closing moments of this match, one fancies. Here's Dennis Betts. Well, I always felt that uh, the longer this game went on, Bradford would hold the upper hand, mainly due to the fact that they've had so much rest. A lot of people think that it goes against you, it can be negative. I thought it would be in the opening quarter, and Wigan didn't take their opportunities, it was uh, Bradford that did that. Not a bad little chip over, though. Renoff couldn't just get to it. No, to knock on, the referee will bring it back, it will be the turnover. No advantage to uh, the Bradford Bulls. Yeah, Neat little effort there from uh, from Johns. Harry. On other nights it uh, sticks. Yeah. Andy Farrell. Well, can only reflect now on what might have been, and we'll be hoping, hey, as we all hope, for good Watch news from Australia Come early on. next week that the Ashes tour will be back on. Right, and let's hope, two. if it is, it right that. Uh, Andy Farrell leads Great Britain to a famous victory that night. I don't think his men are going to come up with a win here. We have 19 minutes remaining. Bradford have got this grand final in their pockets. Unless anything goes strangely wrong. Well, the ease that they've done oh. is, is knocked on. Well, Field and he nearly, he nearly think, lost the plot then. I think he's badly done to here. I really do think he's badly done to. He should have released it further. You can't lash out there. By the way, he lost control of the ball. Could have been a Bradford penalty. Could yeah, have, you're right, could have, been. could have been the high way, but uh, okay. thankfully the youngster in, just uh, stopped himself. He certainly was on a, a little bit of a walk towards the official. Right, well, I must say one. congratulations to you, Steve-O. You picked Bradford from the first week of the season to win here at Old Trafford tonight. Having said that, you were predicting it would be level pegging at this stage and it would be a Paul Deacon drop goal. Yep. <laughs> No drop goal from Paul Deacon needed thus far. Terry Newton now. Lamb. Radlinski. Newton. Can Wigan give their fans something to smile about? Not yet. Much better there. Good support play. Chester to Lamb. Lamb on the inside to Renoff. Gobbled up what by Michael tackle. Withers. Full back is on song, isn't he? Newton. Lamb. Lamb. Theatre of Dreams. Adrian Lamb, Papua New Guinean international. Stuart Raper, hardly animated on the side, but at least his team are on the board. Well, for once they kept the ball alive, and this was a good effort from the little halfback. Not many opportunities throughout this game, but I must say it was brought about by good effort, especially from their hooker Terry Newton, who interchanged on two occasions to get them into that position. It was Newton that offloaded from the dummy half, gave the opportunity for this fella. Maybe. Can they come back quickly? They realise that they need a very quick try indeed. Werner taking the kicking responsibility. Yes, Werner at the extras because Andrew Farrell's great point scoring run has come to an end. It's 26 6 at Old Trafford. And Adrian Lamb, a loser with the Roosters in Australia last year. Former teammate of Shane Rigon. But Adrian Lamb has at least got Wigan on the scoreboard and they will be grateful for that at least. Well, it saves the embarrassment, but that was the best build-up of the night from the Warriors. Wigan, by the way, the last team to beat the Bradford Bulls, 16-10 at home in August. The gap now 20 points. Three converted tries. Game on, Steve. Sure is. Still plenty of time. But Wigan realise that they've uh, they've got to get another touchdown to get them back into this match. So it's at a time when they've got to gamble. They've nothing to lose. Oh, that's coming away. 
big hit there. Good work from Gartner. And it's play on. Dallas. Oh, Fielding's losing his cool. He went looking yet again after he played that football. Here goes Lowe's. Gartner's on his inside. The Wiley Hooker just slowing things down. Good run again from dummy half. Mackay, Henry Paul. He's escaped the net again almost. Good job again that Radlinski was there. Mackay at dummy half. Will he fancy his own chances? He will. And there's a major problem here for Terry Newton. He's coming off, click, clutching the wrist. It's with Vanganar. Over the shoulder it goes. Knocked on. Play, play on. on. Fielder. Crowns the grand final for him. <laughs> Stuart Fielden gets the try. Wigan gave their supporters hopes of a comeback. Stuart Fielden has just robbed them out. Only his third try of the year. But the youngster gets over and will remember Old Trafford this year, all right. He was crying in 99. Think he'll be smiling now. Good work, kept it alive. Dallas took the gamble, came up with a knock on. It was back to six. And that, as Eddie says, surely must be the trophy for the Bradford Bulls. The side that finished top of the pile 2001. And this youngster, surely has gotten them to the point where they will be lifting that trophy high. And boy, oh boy, he'll be proud, but they fully deserve it. This has been a wonderful job done on their opposition. Stuart Fielder, who grabbed the try on the big stage in the 2000 Challenge Cup final at Murrayfield, and he's added to his curriculum vitae here. And Henry Paul to try and kick two more points for the Bradford total. Oh, he's missed with another, as uh, Henry. 30 points to six. The Bulls, though, home and hose, just about. The team that topped the table for the third time in five seasons, with 14 straight home wins, a 100% record, and many people pointed the finger and said, as Wigan head for the exits, Many people pointed the finger and said on a small pitch, a smaller pitch than normal, they are awesome. Well, they have proved that they are awesome on the wide open spaces of the Theatre of Dreams. They blew the opposition apart in the first half. Control rugby league football. Well, there's little doubt in my mind, Eddie, that the, the ability of Bradford to mix and match the effort, share the workload, run into dummy half. I think every single player on the Bradford side has done his bit at the play the ball area. And that has been just outstanding. Here's four short. What? Ten metres inside the Wigan half, they're on the last tackle. And Robbie Paul drills the ball for touch and gets a touch of cramp, I think, in the process. No finesse, you don't need it. There's the uh, reason just outstretched and the cramp sets in. When he lifts the trophy, he won't feel a thing other than the silverware. I think he's quite happy now, Brian Noble. Well, uh, I'm sure he is delighted. And I'm sure that Robbie Paul will be delighted. A loser here in the World Cup final last year. And four major Cup final defeats behind him. Now he will come out a winner. And uh, little Paul Deacon has come out to play his part in the closing 12 minutes or so here. What a sub to throw on. Harvey to, Howard. To the battlefield. I think Wigan now and Stuart Raper are looking towards that clock. They want to finish as quickly as possible. They'll play with a lot of pride. They'll try to do things. Well, not like that. It's been a nightmare for this fellow, Steve Renew. He's not on his own, though. No, he's had uh, four grand final successes with Brisbane. Three tries against Cronulla in the 97 grand final. This one, though, well, it won't figure in his scrapbook. Not the best pass, to be fair. And there's been plenty of those. And Bradford, yet again, will go through a set piece, I'm sure. When they get into a good position, job well done. 
Yes, he's got uh, 11 minutes or so to wait, and then he will lead his men to the podium on the centre spot, and they will pick up the Tetley Super League trophy for 2001. Well, they say it, that they would choke yet again. They have failed to do that, and they've done it magnificently. The only chance that they'll choke tonight is on uh, the bottles of champagne that will be flowing very, very freely. Unusual to see two captains off the field, Steve-O, in the closing moments of a grand final, but uh, that's the situation we have here. Well, it's been a team effort, and Brian Noble knows it as well. Drop goal from Henry Paul. That's another point. Another point to the Bradford Bulls total. 31-6. He's bowing out in great style. And, uh, of course, a former favourite of the Wigan fans, Henry Paul. Wonderful execution there. Followed through superbly, right over the black dot, right in the middle. Another nail in the coffin, and aren't they happy? They have had to endure so much criticism, so as the players at Bradford the coaches before them but let us just say for uh, Brian Noble a British coach a British coach has led the team to grand final success and commiserations of course to, uh, to Stuart Raper well to be fair I was thought that Brian Noble would uh, allow his players to express themselves a little bit more than the previous coaches Matthew Elliott and, of course, uh, Brian Smith, and what a game he's having, too. Yes. Jimmy Lowe's, he's back to his best. Gartner's the dummy half, Deacon floats it wide to Henry Paul again. Wigan are fatigued, they've got nine minutes to wait till the final siren. Here's Deacon, hungry, and stabs it for Mackay, who will score another, but it'll go to the video referee for clarification. Graham Mackay thinks he's scored. It's a question of whether he's onside, I think. And then, what about the grounding? Beautiful grubber kick. I think you'll find that he's going to be OK. Mackay just comes into it. Yep, he's all right. He's on the whitewash. You can see there that uh, Paul Deacon is a metre in front of the whitewash. This will be a try for mine. If he's deemed to have got it down, Hesitation between the full-back and the wing of Brett Dallas. Rudlinski allowed it for Dallas. No trouble at all. And has he got it down yet? Yes. Now he has. Took a while. It is in slow motion, though, of course. This fellow turned 33 years of age yesterday. A winner 10 years ago in Australia. A winner 10 years on here in the UK. Graham Mackay, the latest try scorer for the Bradford Bulls and his farewell appearance they are going to party until midnight on Sunday well the beer trucks will be going into Manchester now because this mob they won't half have a celebration drink but a superb little kick there from the substitute Paul Deacon and what an honour well Mackay is going to take the conversion. I scored it. Why not? Well, he's Game's on, over. He's on his way to the Leeds Tykes. <laughs> He'll take two more. His name will be forever in the record book. Mackay try, Mackay goal, 37-6. It has been an annihilation. That's the only word I can use. Well, it's like the wreckers ball, isn't he? He's big enough, strong enough, and when he gets the swing, he's hard to stop. That's the two points. And Brian Noble has plotted Wigan's heaviest defeat in a cup final now. And Robbie, effort. Robbie is in the mood to, uh, to begin the party. He's uh, about uh, seven minutes early. I think you and can there's save Leslie set. Vinokolu. Listen, it's not going to get any easier for the opposition next year. Mike Forshaw. It's been a wonderful team effort. They've uh, dug deep for Bradford. Lowe's. Oh, it's uh, a night that Stewart will want to forget. 
They'll come back, though, Andy Farrell promised they would last year against Saints. They came back, but, boy, they've been taken to the cleaners. Deacon struggles to his feet, lows down the short side. A little kick, it still lows on the last tackle, and this time Wigan smother him. Well, Andy Farrell looks as though he doesn't know what's hit him. As does the rest of the squad in the cherry and white. They were, they were favourites, Steve-O, short, short priced favourites, it must be said, but they were favourites coming into Old Trafford. Which surprised me. I think uh, a lot of people just took it into account that they thought that Bradford would be underdone. They'd only had one real strong hit out, and that was against Wigan, of course, in five weeks. But this has been absolutely magnificent by the Bulls. Lamb to Radlinski. And uh, it was a high shot on Radlinski. It's a penalty. Stuart Fielden. Well, he went for him. He glanced off his head, fortunately. Radlinski's all right. We well, certainly can do without that with the scoreline at 37-6. They know the result. Neil Cowie probably playing his last match in Wigan Colours tonight. And him and Forshaw having a bit of a tussle now. Here is John. Quick pass, Berner, on to Connolly, on to Renoff. Renoff's away from a couple, still going Renoff. Renoff still, back it goes, here's Dennis Betts. Bradford don't want them to score another. Henry Paul and Withers come to the rescue yet again. Johns, wide to Lamb, a grubber kick for Radlinski to chase. Rain Mackay just flicks it there. Safety first, sadness written all over the face of Stuart Raypat. Mackay takes a breather, it's been one of those nights. And he's played his part, safety first as I said. Well, there are empty seats to the left as the Wigan fans try and beat the traffic away from Old Trafford, but to the right, nobody is heading for home yet. They have a party to get underway in four minutes' time. To be fair though, Eddie, there's only a few going, and uh, that's wonderful from the Wigan fans, showing their respect because they realise they've been outplayed, but at least they are showing and staying for the presentation. There are a few, as you say, trying to beat the traffic, but I can assure you they are staying to show their respect because this is indeed a champion effort from a champion side. Wigan looking to uh, to finish with something. Johnson will do just that, will he? No. Withers with a great tackle. He has hurt himself. Withers caught a stray boot on the thigh. Chances here. Oh, what a hit! Anderson. They can't get through Wigan. Connolly. Can Connolly find the way? Flicks it wide to the touch judge. Dallas. In despair, Wigan dejected and their coach desolate. Can't blame them trying to force the pass. And they took the step, get it out wide to Brett Dallas. Of course, Wigan, of course, will look towards the injury to uh, very early injury to Brian Carney, but that really had no effect by the time he went off. You just got the impression that Bradford had full control of this game. They have been coached well. It has been a night where the ball has controlled and run rampant. Yes, it's been a masterclass from Brian Noble. 37 points to six tells its own story. Here's Vicona. Well, that was oh. silly from Cowie. Well, it's been played in a wonderful spirit so far. Field. Maybe the last minutes of uh, Cowie's career. Field. Wants to go out with uh, a different sort Field. of a bang. It's not 30 seconds since I talked to you, right? Believe it, it was on the shoulder. Come on. Well, he's had a chat with the referee 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Didn't like the elbow, so he decided to just throw one in himself. Right, Jimmy careful. Lowe's just wanted a piece of the action. starting to get 
into the spirit, the Bradford Bull supporters. They're ready to party. And their fans will be, their players will be with them every step of the way. This is James Lowe's. Dallas gets to him. Just playing out time now, the Bulls. Champions, the last first past the post champions in 97. Now champions, courtesy of a grand final. It'll be the knock on. Wigan will end with the football in their hands then in the last minute. But they won't care. Smiles all around. They've had a great time, haven't they? Henry Paul looks as though he's enjoyed every minute of this. Well, I said before the game started, Eddie, that uh, perhaps come out and enjoy it. They had smiles on their faces. They had the right attitude. The body language was good. And they came to enjoy it. And I noticed that when the two coaches were leading the sides out, Stuart Raper, he, was, he looked calm. But Brian Noble was waving to the crowd, and he was enjoying the moment okay, too. I'll tell you something, you can enjoy this a little bit more. He will. No penalties. Harvey Howard. To keep it going, we're going right to the final siren, and uh, well done to them for that. But his shoulders are hunched, the body language says it all. It's been a desperately disappointing night for Stuart Raper. His Wigan players and the Wigan crowd land to maybe give us something to remember. But it's the abiding memory of this magnificent Bradford defence that we're watching here. Anderson was high on O'Connor. Just straight off the top of the shoulder, into the face. So, Johns. Johns. Oh, well, that's, that sums it up, I'm afraid. That yep. sums Wigan's night up 100%. 15 seconds away from the Bradford Bulls being crowned as the 2001 Tetley Super League champions. And listen to them counting down. Supporters. Well, I've got mine, you'll have to get yours. Brian Noble is a winner. And many, many congratulations to him. And our commiserations, of course, to the losers, Stuart Raper and the Wigan Warriors. Moments for coaches and players and supporters to savour. And did Dennis Betts say there, you were just too good, as he shook the hand of Brian Noble? And they realised it. And the brothers is, in arms there. Is this the last time that they have played together? Who knows? The injured price. But what a moment, and what a moment for Brian Noble. As far as my mind can go back, Eddie, I think he's the first former hooker as a coach to win a title since Colin Clark. I'd have to check that out, but I think that perhaps would be right. Well, I thought you would bring the hookers into it some way if you could. Well, they often say that they've got no brains, but I tell you what, this guy has proved them wrong. He has every right to be jubilant. So has the players. Henry Paul, a winner with Wigan here in 98. He brings the curtain down on his rugby league career for now with a winner's ring in the year 2001. Well, when they won the Challenge Cup in Scotland, they said perhaps that half the monkey had been ripped off their back. And I'll tell you what, the gorillas and you name it, everything from the animal kingdom has been rubbed off their back tonight. They have been superb. They have. Let's hear from their coach, Brian Noble. He's with Bill. Brian, you were confident before the game. Were you that confident? Oh, in your dreams, really, you don't think you're going to be involved in one-way you know, thing like that, but I thought we could do a number on them all week, I really did. And that's a testament to the players, their desire this evening and their will to win and to show that they're the best team in the competition and get the accolades. I'm, I'm so delighted for them and everybody at Bradford and a little bit for myself, but there's a lot of spirit out there because people talk about tactics and things like that and about te technical and tactical things, but... That was a win for team spirit. That was a win for the like each other. I was highly delighted for them. Right, a lot of people are going to say that Wigan were never at the races, but I don't think you allowed them ever to reach the races, did you? Well, that's what we get, I get paid to do. Show them the pictures of what they do and what they don't do. And I thought we invested in it. And that's down to them. Uh, you know, with a lot of people leaving tonight, Carl Jennings, you know, conditioner, one of my best friends. Henry's going, Graham Mackay. But we kept the emotion out of it. We practiced as normal this week. And um, we focused on playing Wigan. I'm just so delighted for all these people because 
they've had this thing on the back as much as we have all these times and they bought the tickets thinking oh Christ here we go again and there's another drama unfolded well we took the drama out of it tonight I'm, I'll probably have a few beers and what does it mean to you Brian from a personal point of view a British coach wins the British grand final it's about these players I, I, I'm a privileged man I get to work with these people day in day out we have our rough times and we've all stuck together and um, it's about them I'm just so delighted to get to work with them and uh, they deserve this because they've worked harder than anybody else this year we scored more tries than anybody else we've played more rugby than anybody else and we conceded less so we're tough and we can play footy as well I think we just killed the gorilla thanks Brian well done Thank well you. done indeed to Brian Noble and he follows Ellery Hanley of course with St Helens as the only British coaches to have won the grand final and indeed the Super League crown since we began summer football the man of the match Michael Withers with his three tries for the Bradford Bull a magnificent achievement from Michael three first half tries some sensational defense from the fullback as well he has written his name on this final here tonight other people who have done exactly that are the match officials will you welcome the referee Mr Stuart Cummings that's a predictable response his touch judges Mr Tony Martin Mr Steve Taylor and the reserve official Mr Ian Smith gentlemen a job very very well done To have a great grand final, you need two great teams. And we have had two great teams on show here this evening. The losers must come up first. The Wigan fans, well done for staying here to cheer the boys, as Andy Farrell will now lead his men up onto the podium to receive their losers' medals. Andy Farrell leads Terry O'Connor, Gary Connolly, Mick Cassidy, Dennis Betts, Chris Chester, Paul Johnson, Neil Cowie, Brett Dallas, David Ferner, Harvey Howard, Steve Renoff, Chris Radlinski, Terry Newton, Matthew Johns, Brian Carney, and last but by no means least, Adrian Lamb. Well done to Wigan. They played their part in a wonderful Tetley Super League season, and they have played their part tonight in a fantastic match. But after that first half display, there was only ever going to be one team that would take out this glittering trophy tonight. And it's the men from Bradford, coached on the night magnificently by Brian Noble, a British coach, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll ask now the Bradford Bulls to come up and claim the trophy and get their rings. First of all, wonderful performances from James Lowes, Henry Paul, what a way to bow out. Leon Price, Danny Gartner, Michael Withers, the man of the match, Shane Rigon, Paul Deacon, Paul Anderson, Stuart Fielden, Jamie Peacock, Tavita Vicona. Mike Forshaw, Scott Naylor, Joe Vanganar, the man himself, Brian McDermott, and another one who says farewell, Graham Mackay. But here is someone who's going nowhere other than to this podium to receive the trophy from Colin Povey, the captain of the Bradford Bulls, Robbie Paul. He receives the Tetley's Super League trophy and the Bradford Bulls are champions 2001. And let's not forget the coach, of course, Brian Noble. Captain, 
in Robbie Paul going to say a few words. Robbie Paul, what a night this has been for the Bradford Bulls. Yeah, it's been a good night. It's been an um, accomplishment of a really hard year. Can I first take my hat off to all the other teams in the competition? It's been a tough year, our toughest to date. Uh, take our hats off to our, our fans that have supported us throughout the year. Again, you can see that they've turned up in big numbers. And uh, take our hats off to the backfield staff, the playing staff, and especially our families. At last, Robbie, the Charlie is off your back. You have played a grand final and you have played it magnificently and you've won in style. Yeah, we'd like to thank you for that. This is exactly how we wanted the, the year to finish for us. Uh, it wasn't as easy as the scoreline says. We had to really knuckle down, do some hard work. We knew that they were going to be, you know, match ready. And um, what more can you say? We're happy with this. We come away with the win. We've got our ring now. So we'll just celebrate tonight. And the party will start in about five minutes and go on till when? The party's already started. <laughs> I'm sure it has. Robbie Paul, many, many congratulations. They've been a credit to the competition this year, and so too is Brian Noble and all his staff. A fantastic effort, a fantastic night. Bradford Bulls, the 2001 Tetley Super League champions. a couple of years ago it was just in this spot wasn't it just behind you at this end of the ground you had that try disallowed the one that would have probably won you the grand final that year this must make up for it without a doubt this wipes out all the bad feelings that we had in 99 you know we were a great year that year but this is this is just fantastic this is what all the players dream of all year we all work for this one game this one game and it's just it just makes it's just the feelings awesome it's brilliant i can't explain how good it feels it's brilliant did you think you were going to do that sort of job on Wigan? I mean, all the guys are saying we're going to do a job on them, but to do a, a job as, as big no, as that? No, and Wigan have been great all year, and I don't think they did themselves justice today. But uh, in the same token, you know, we were the best side by a mile, um, and we deserved it more than them, we wanted it more than them, and that's why it came down to the end. We, you know, the best team won, and the best team all season, you know, I think, which we have been, you know, we've, we've won it, and I think we've deserved it. Thanks, Leon, and Carl. Enjoy the party. Yes, the boy's saying that the party has uh, already started, or at least Robbie Paul said the party's already started. And, uh, well, if they get home to Bradford tonight, I think they'll, they'll drink the place dry. And they deserve it. They really do. I think uh, we're going to go back down to the pitch in a moment to uh, talk to a couple more of the players. In fact, we can go right away to, uh, to Bill, who's with... Those two, Brian McDermott on the left and Jamie Peacock on the right. Oh. Bill, it's all yours. The feeling must be terrific. It's unbelievable, yeah, to, uh, to, to set out and make a plan from week one in pre-season and to go right through the season and achieve what you plan. It's, it's a massive feeling, massive feeling. Jamie's showing the, the battle scars alongside you. I mean, that just gives an indication. It might have been an emphatic victory on the scoreboard, but you had to work to achieve that dominance, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we're going to a really good team, like, but I think that's best we've ever played in a final. You know, and, like, we're coming at half time, and uh, Nobbs told us, you know, play it cool in second half, see how we go on from there. But yeah, it was a tough game, really. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot. Eel Days wins, remember. <laughs> Mick, there you go, a hat-trick, the Harry Sunderland Trophy and a watch. Not a bad night's work, then. No, nah, it's a good night's work. It was all due to uh, our forwards played the way early and I was just lucky to get on the end of it. Well, just like Leon Price, a couple of years ago here, you know, it was your alleged touch that denied the try that could have changed the story. So to come back and score a hat-trick and get your hands on that trophy must be so sweet. Yeah, just to win the games as our main focus, but to get a hat-trick was just a bonus. Um, great feeling, a lot better than two years ago. <laughs> I tell you, um, you know, party hard tonight and see what happens. 